So let us discuss this concept of data types. There are several different ways that you can understand what a data type is um, and what the concept means. We really do want to understand um, why this has suddenly become an issue when we start programming in Java. In some other languages, we never really worried about it. In some languages, um, you simply um, could do things like this. Age equals five. And this line of code in, for example, Python, simply stored the number five in this variable age. One issue that you had with Python, however, and Python did its work behind the scenes to make all of this happen for you, is that Python itself, the environment, had to decide what type of information what type of information you were storing. Now, some of the errors that you would have found in Python are because the environment, the Python environment, couldn't work out what type of information. Um, and sometimes it just assumed that you were putting in a string. If you write age equals five, there's no guarantee that you don't actually want the string version of it rather than the number itself. So these are decisions that the environment took over and worried about for you. So you could write age equals five. And you could then go and manipulate your code and do stuff afterwards. That's all very well when you use languages like Python, JavaScript, um, is not quite the same, but it has a similarity in the sense that it tries not to worry you about this question of what type of information you are storing. It gives you a, um, an opportunity to store information, but it doesn't worry too much about the type. But Java does. For Java, data type is actually a big deal. It's not just for Java, for the programming language C, C++, C sharp, and um, C sharp, sorry, and also it's um, echo in Visual Basic.net. So this is .NET. Um, all of these platforms, and including Java, this concept of data types is key. So the concept has two elements. You have to explicitly tell the environment, and rather than use the word environment, I'm going to use the three letters IDE, uh, which is your development environment. You have to tell the IDE what type of information you are storing. You have to do this explicitly. You can't rely on the system itself knowing. The question for you is why? Is this just a peculiarity of the languages that we mentioned a moment ago? Is this a peculiarity of this sort of group of languages and the history of this language? Or is there a fundamental reason that you do it? Well, there is a fundamental reason you do it. Whenever you store information, um, you actually physically have to store it. In C in particular, in the programming language C and what came before, it was really crucial that you said to the system that was storing your information how much space how much space that pen isn't that clear. Let's try another one. How much space you needed. So um, in your architecture unit, you will have come across the notion of bits, also of bytes. And you come across the idea that you're storing numbers in potentially 8-bit formats. 
and so on. You, you will have seen this in your architecture unit. The crucial element is, is that you really need, when you have these types of ways and of representing numbers and values for the computer point of view, it needs to know how much space you need, right? It isn't an idle question. It's a fundamental question. So this brings us to one of the key elements of why in Java you need to say what the data type is. When you tell the program that you're using a specific type of data type, so whole numbers are int, um, and I'm storing them in some value. Look at, this, look at this simple statement here. I'm using a whole number. That's the name of my variable, and that's the value. By telling the system this piece of information that I'm using an integer, you are telling it how much space The system needs to store it. Now you might say, well, why does that matter these days? Memory, RAM is so, so easy to get cheaply and get lots of it. It doesn't really matter. Um, there are some people who would agree with you. And there are some languages which have been developed with the idea that there is plenty of space now with the increase of storage capacity to worry about what type of data. Um, and although that might seem to completely make this a feature of the past, um, it isn't exactly the full story. In Java, um, as, and the rest of its family, that it, that it grew out of and is related to. The other reason that you specify data types and you say int, let's have a look at, um, let's have a look at two pieces of information which look very, very similar. Uh, this first one is an int, int, integer, whole number. So this is storing this number five as a whole number. This is a double. A double is a, has a decimal point and stores fractions um, and represents them with decimal points. If you pass the number 5 to it, it is actually storing it as 5.0. And you can test that if you um, write that variable out and do a system outline, you will find it seems to put the dot zero in. It's not a random feature. It's because a double will always make space for parts of um, the code which comes afterwards uh, a decimal point. Okay, so that's one really, really useful thing. These different types are stored differently and require different allocation. But equally so, in Java, you take back control and give yourself more co control as a programmer by deciding what type of data you are storing. You don't have to worry. You don't have to worry in languages like Python, which seems very, they're very useful for lots and lots of different purposes, but it leaves it to the language to worry about what type of data you're storing. And the type of use of Python and the growth of Python generally doesn't make this a huge issue. And it's usually quite straightforward. We tend not to mix strings and numbers, for example. But Java has a broader set of uses than um, the history of Python. And in fact, Python grew out of some of the uses of Java. And Java, by making this data type explicit, gives you control of your program, gives you a level of control, gives you a level of um, ability to um, maneuver and deal with variables in a specific way. So data types are an absolutely critical part of a program. So in our very first sheet, we mentioned this um, and this family of languages. So to, so to round off this very brief video, when you come to Java, 
telling it explicitly what type of information you are storing it, it is a physical question. It will actually affect the way the data is stored. Um, in Java, you have a concept of an array. And the way an array is stored and the type of data you are storing in array is quite critical. And later on, a feature of Java and what makes Java even more powerful is that you can create your own data types. So you can create your own types of data. Um, for example, a bank account. is in many ways a big structure of data. It includes the name of the person, ID values, um, balance values. It might have uh, values of an archive of previous use. It might have a list of all kinds of uh, um, other stuff related to it. It isn't a simple piece of information. And the advantage of um, controlling the data type and working in this way encourages you to see that when you make your own complex pieces of data later on, which you will do, by making it explicit, you have more control over what you are doing. So to round off and to sort of summarize, it may seem to you that the feature of a data type in Java, you know, if you've seen this type of sentence and you thought, I know what's going on there, I'm just putting five in that variable called val, and then I'm going to go and do stuff to it, right? Uh, and put it through some processes. That's nice and simple. You might say, well, why do I need to really spell out what type of data I can do both of these lines in the same one, but I always need to explicitly, whenever I use a variable, tell it. Now, <coughs> there, are, there are very, very important consequences, but we can't go into them here until we learn more about Java. So when you move into Java, pay attention to this very important feature. Always tell the environment what type of data you are storing and make that the first part of your statement when you are declaring a variable another issue that comes very closely with this is that when you want to use variables you don't simply write a line where you allocate a number to them and assume that the environment will know and will do all the work for you you can't start with a simple line like this you have to always declare your variable with its type So this variable here, this line here that I've just written, is what we call a declaration, a statement. So you are staying explicitly in this line here. I want a variable called value2, and the type of data I'm going to store inside value2 is a double. And doubles allow me to do, you know, store numbers like this, right? With decimal points and values and... Um, decimal values afterwards. I have to know when I'm writing my code what type of data and I have to declare it. Now this is also different from um, some other languages where you simply can write out, pass a number into a variable without saying what type of data we're dealing with. So this may strike you um, as uh, more work than you need, but it does give you more control over a lot more aspects of your environment. By making data types explicit, by stating them explicitly, you take control in many, many new ways and, what ja and um, allow different possibilities to open up in your Java code. The debate is not settled. Some people simply argue this is a waste of time in the modern age and everything should be implicitly, but Java is still in the top five languages used in, in the community. And if you simply ignore it because you're picking a trend up, you are making a mistake. You need to understand this as well as understand the alternatives. But when you're coding here, you need to get this 
you have to work on the idea. Tell me what type of data and then state the name of the variable, stick a semicolon on. Now that's available for me to give it values, assign values to it. 